Tyler Anderson, and I'm here today to talk about my experience in the military, my injuries, and why I decided to become part of this historic class action lawsuit. I'm here today to speak to you on be behalf of thousands of veterans who served their country honorably in Iraq, Afghanistan, and came home with post-traumatic stress disorder. I fought one war for my country abroad, but I am now fighting a different battle here at home. It's a battle that, sh that should never have to have been fought. The battle to get health care benefits, to which I and thousands of other veterans with PTSD are entitled. Let me share my story. I enlisted in the United States Marine Corps a week after September 11th, the terrorist attacks in 2001, and, placed, and was placed on the delayed entry program to get into the Marine Corps. I entered the Marines in 2002. I wanted to defend my country and make my father proud of me. My father was a Vietnam veteran who served in the Marine Corps and was also a drill instructor and trained Marines. I went through training to become a rifleman. I was with the Security Forces Battalion for two years and, and then was assigned to 2nd Battalion, 3rd Marine Division and deployed to Afghanistan. In May of 2005, my unit deployed and pursued the Taliban in the mountains. We were sent on a mission to get an operative who had taken credit for shooting down a team of Navy SEALs. We were in the Kunar province and they were ambushed at dawn with mortars, rockets, and small arms fire. I was shot in the arm and the chest in the early moments of the battle if it weren't for the help of my corpsman, who is the Marine's medic, um, I would have died. The corpsman laid on, laid on top of me um, to shield me from m further harm while he worked on another Marine who was hit in the femoral arteries in his legs. We were medevaced to a hospital in Afghanistan where they put in my chest tube and then I was sent to Germany to launch to um, Army Hospital. Um, nine days later I, I returned to Afghanistan uh, to continue uh, fighting with the Marines even though I had serious injuries and was still wearing gauze in the wound in my chest. My medical condition worsened and the doctors at the field hospital in Afghanistan discovered that my lungs were infected. So they sent me back to Lawnstool and then to Bethesda, Maryland at, at the Bethesda Naval Hospital. Within a month, I was put on convalescent leave and sent home to North Dakota. I was still an active duty Marine. Four months later, I returned back to my, my unit in Hawaii to wait for the return of my deployed unit. My condition was evaluated by a medical evaluation board and a physical evaluation board. They rated my PTSD at 10% and the nerve damage in my right arm at 10%. They did not feel that my chest injuries, which were, which was, were, was disabling at all, which is alarming, given that my lung capacity was permanently diminished. My 20% rating from the military seemed low given my injuries. 
When I asked a chief petty officer if, I had a, if, if the rating was fair, I was told that it was. But as I came to learn, it wasn't fair at all. I had been diagnosed with PTSD and I was supposed to be rated at 50%. I was discharged in April of 2006 and got a severance payment from the military, but because my rating was below 30%, it was, the 30% rating was needed for ongoing health care for me and my family. Two months after the medical board's evaluation of 20%, the VA took a different view on my injuries. Using the same rating schedule, the same rating scale as the MEB and PEB used, they rated me at a 50% rating for my PTSD, a 30% rating for my arm, and a 60% disability rating for my chest. When those numbers are combined, that's an accumulative 90% um, disability rating. They deducted the monies that were, uh, were given to me as a severance, which were somewhere around $15,000 was then deducted because deducted from my VA pay and I received 10% which is roughly $117 a month to live on. I was unemployed and began taking odd jobs despite my disabilities. My wife has a serious medical condition and even though she had even though she had health insurance, we st still spent thousands of dollars on co-payments for medical bills. She would have had, she would have had better health care, and we would have not, and we would have not incurred those out-of-pocket expenses had I been retired. We were expecting our first child in August. And I'm already thinking about the health care our child will need and about the world our child will find when we welcome him or her into the world. I've decided to become part of this lawsuit because I'm not only a person who was shortchanged on my, on my benefits by the military when I was discharged. There are thousands of people like me who served their country honorably and were injured during their service. I fought for my country in a war in Afghanistan, but when I came home, I had to fight a new battle, a battle for benefits and health care to which I and thousands of veterans are entitled. These developments with the lawsuit will provide better health care and disability benefits for thousands of Iraq and Afghanistan veterans like me who are discharged for PTSD, I urge my fellow veterans to please fill out an opt-in, fill out the opt-in form and join this lawsuit. Our attorneys have negotiated for you to get your records corrected and will likely end up with a higher disability rating. If you are listening and you know a veteran who served in Iraq and Afghanistan, and even if, they don't if, if you don't qualify to be part of the lawsuit, talk to them. Ask them if they were discharged between 2002 and 2008. Ask them if their PTSD was part of why they were discharged and what their rating was. If they were rated under 50% for PTSD, they may qualify and go to www.ptsdlawsuit.com for more information. Thank you for your time.